Hey guys, it's Brad. And I'm Krista. With the Big Family Homestead. And today we have a video that we have knowledge to share mm -hmm. because we've learned from experience. Right. And it's, it's a, uh, we've been milking cows for about six years, but in the last couple of weeks it has become vastly different apparent. Um, <laughs> you got to know what you're doing. <laughs> Right, so we have a small homestead and we use milk for a lot of things, especially we have a special needs daughter that she has to have the raw milk because she gets sick otherwise. Right, she's um, through G2. Yeah. yeah. So these are some things that we have learned from hard experience. Oh my goodness, yes. That you better know these things before you go in or you're gonna have a rough time of it. Yep. Oh, yeah. First thing, let's start with an easy one, space. Yep. Not the final frontier, but uh, yeah, gotta have enough. Gotta have you gotta have land. You, you don't have to have a ton of land, um, especially depending on the size cow that you get. Um, but we have about four acres of grass for our animals. Uh, we supplement with hay as well all year round. That's the thing that you need to consider mm -hmm. is if you have a smaller amount of area say like a if you had a half acre for one animal you're gonna have to supplement with hay yep and so that means you're either gonna need to make the hay or buy the hay right so there's extra expense there right, right now today 2022 bales of hay the big round bales are about 65 bucks without the delivery cost well and that's before that's well that that's yeah. where we're at that's where we're at and that's round bales um and they're, it's gonna go up guys. Yeah, it's, it's gonna, gonna go, go up. up. So space, consider mm -hmm. your breed. Mm -hmm. uh, a Dexter, which is very small, mm -hmm. does not need as much room. Nope, doesn't need as much room, doesn't need as much feed. However though, it doesn't make as much milk either. De it depends on how much milk you're gonna want, depends on your breed. Why don't you talk about the breeds? So, that's, that's another. So, Breeds, okay. You've got Dexter cows, you have mini jerseys. Those are amazing, um, small family home, cow. Small family cows. Then you go up to, you have jerseys, you have milking shorthorns, you have, uh, the list is so long, I can't list them all. The but big then, ones. Then you get up to uh, Brown Swiss, you get Holsteins. Holsteins are the mega. They're cow. the producer. They're the heavy milk producer. I mean, they're producing 10 gallons a day. Do you have space in your refrigerator for 10 gallons of milk a day? We don't. Well, <laughs> so the point about the breed, though, mm -hmm. is know what you're going to get mm -hmm. before you all of a sudden are stuck with 10 gallons a day. Exactly. You need to know, you need to study which breed is going to fit your family best. Um, if you have a large family and 10 gallons may work, uh, if you have a smaller family or it's just you and your spouse, you know, a, a, Dexter, a Dexter cow or a mini Jersey would be amazing. Uh, mini Jer uh, not, uh, not many jerseys. I don't know how much milk they give, but I know Dexter cows can give a gallon and a half to two gallons a day. That's still a lot of milk folks, you know? Yeah. Um, well, and also consider different breeds have different levels of what's called milk fat. Mm-hmm. And uh, that means how much fat is in there. Because, like, let's say that you're an ice cream person. Yeah. And you want to make a lot of ice cream. Or butter. Mm. Will you best be considering <laughs> uh, which breed is going to work for you? Obviously, like, um, not obviously, because, well, not obviously. A Jersey <laughs> has a very high milk fat, where a Dexter has a very much less it's, it's percentage-wise. Yeah, it's less, yes. And also talk about the A1C thing. A, no, not A1C. A1, A2, A2. Right. A2, A2 milk. You can get cows that are A1, A2. It's the genetics. You can get A2 or A, A2, A2 or A1, A2. It's all in the genetics. A2, A2 milk is actually the most easy to digest um, for your body. So if you are a lacto, a person who is lactose intolerant because you're buying store-bought store -bought milk and you can't, your belly hurts after drinking it. That mm. milk has been processed the stew out of, um, and there's nothing good that left in that milk. Um, all of the lactase it's that gone. your body needs to digest that milk is gone. 
However, if you have a cow and you're milking this cow and you're drinking the <gasps> raw milk, gasp. Um, you check out the legal stuff for you. Yes, you check out the legal stuff for you or whatever you prefer. Um, that raw milk actually has the lactase in it and your body is able to digest it. So, Another word on that. We have had friends who have said they've been lactose intolerant their whole lives and they come over and drink a, a big old thing of our raw milk mm -hmm. um, knowing it was problems. raw and they don't have problems yep. or they'll have ice cream mm -hmm. and they'll say hallelujah yep. Brad when you're making more of this ice cream because they can have it yeah and you talk to your own doctor you do all of that for yourself we're not doctors this is not medical advice right just saying yep Okay, other so, stuff. Other stuff. Okay. We, this is this, we'll just go with this top one. Yep. Um, well, actually, let let's me, let me go start into, with, let's go into breeding instead. Uh, hold on. I want to, I okay. want to jump into that one. Okay. A friend of mine who has raised goats 25 years, he uh, consoled us recently when we had a cow go down a year and a half ish ago, two years ago. Mm -hmm. And we did everything that we thought was right. The veterinarian was there, did not know it was a puzzle, did not know why the cow died. Uh, but he said, if you have livestock, mm -hmm. eventually you're going to have dead stock. Yeah. And you have to go into that knowing that it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. They're going to, they're going to die. Yeah. Just like you're going to die, we're going to die. At right. some point, they're going to die. Sometimes you cannot predict why it happened. Right. Sometimes even the vet will come out and scratch, scratch their head and go, ah. yeah. but you have to have that mentality of understanding that it's not going to be there forever. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um, so with that said, if you breed your, um, cow because you have to breed your cow every year for or else it to, they won't stay in milk they won't stay in milk they have they have to have a baby every year to be able to continue to produce milk um calving you got there's loads of videos that you can watch on the process um there's lots of books there's a there's one book i can't remember the name of the author but it's keeping um keeping, keeping a family cow excellent resource it has everything from wellness to calving to what a, feeding and everything um it's an excellent resource um if you don't get if the calf is not born properly or quickly enough it could die it's it's just the way things go um along with that you're gonna have well, that, you're gonna have you know, you're gonna have a calf you need to know what to do with that calf yeah. Is it going to be another milk cow? Is it going to be for food or gonna are you going to sell it? I mean, it's, you have to be able to feed that calf from the mom's milk for several days. Are you going to keep it with, it? there's so many things to consider when you have a milk cow. It's not just, Oh, I have this milk cow. Now I have this milk. What do I do with all milk. this milk? What do I do with all this milk? It doesn't and stay that way. It, yeah. It's, there's, there's a lot to the process. Um, uh, the vet bills. The vet bills. Yeah, that's what I was gonna go into. You know, if your if your cow is having problem calving, you got to call the vet out. That's a fee just for them to drive out here. There's now a mileage fee on our from our vet. There's, I don't blame them. I don't blame them either. Price of gas. They've got to offset that to to the farmer. Um, their vets are a great resource in in helping you to keep your cow healthy. Um, if you don't want to give them antibiotics, there are other ways to get them healthy and the vet will help you through those. But there's sometimes where antibiotics are just absolutely necessary. Yeah. We had that problem. We had that issue with, with Dottie, our cow last month when she had her calf, not last month, a few weeks ago. She was going down. She was, she had toxic mastitis. The only thing that's going to get that, fix that is antibiotics and heavy duty ones. So even though we're not usually fans no. of antibiotics, sometimes you just got to bite the bullet and do, do it, it for the sake of the animal. Right. Right. You just have to, you just have to bite the bullet. You, you know, you can, you can give them all kinds of, you know, herbs and things like that, but sometimes great, it's, but, but that, but sometimes it's just too late for that. You have to go with the antibiotics to help your cow. 
so um vet stuff yeah also you may want to consider where you live because mm -hmm. maybe a vet might not come to you right if you're too far out the vet might not be able to get to you you may have to haul the animal to the vet make a phone call mm -hmm. before because you don't want to be taking sick animals on a long ride no mm -mm. they might not make it nope. yeah it's going to be an unnecessary stress on the animal right. this one second one oh yeah you're married to the farm you're married to it you if you have a milking animal it has to be done twice a day mm -hmm. religiously yep or else they can get mastitis yep they can get sick and so you it either has to be you or somebody you really trust mm -hmm. who knows what's what oh, yeah. tell them about that uh that instance where some friends of ours oh yeah they went on a little vacation yep uh, so some friends of ours went on a vacation. Who milk cows. They Yeah, they have a 60, 70 cow dairy. Uh, so not a super huge one, but still they get tons of milk. Plenty. Plenty. Um, they decided they want to go on vacation. They had a, a relative or close friend. Who I supposedly can't knew how to do this. Knew what to do. Well, they they put teat dip on their cows, you know, before and after milking. And... They used the wrong teat dip. They reused the wrong cups and accidentally they used put acid, acid on each and every cow's teat. That's horrible. In the barn. It was awful. It took them weeks to get better and it was just, it was bad. So you're married to the farm mm -hmm. and you're married to those cows at a certain time of the day. You cannot fluctuate it greatly. No. You can fluctuate a little, but not greatly. But also, you set the time, not the cow. You make the time frame on when when milking is. So if you want to do it at four o'clock in the morning, knock, knock yourselves yourself out. out. But you got to do it again four o'clock in the afternoon. So if you have a conflict at four o'clock in the afternoon, you might want to adjust that time. And you can't change it. You can't change it. You got to stick with. You got to stick with between one and two hours, between about an hour time frame of your milking times so if you normally milk at four and you wake up late and it's five that's okay so just don't make it go to seven just don't go to seven because then the cow is hurting and that's unnecessary yeah. pain on the animal exactly. unnecessary stress yeah yeah what else i well we were i think we kind of talked about lots of milk yep lots and lots of milk we're getting uh four gallons each milking right now from one out of, cow, a, jer a, jersey. Out of a jersey cow and let me tell you guys i'm having a hard time right now deciding on what to do with all this milk we're making cheese we're make i'm making cheese i'm actually making goat cheese right now because we had a lot of goat milk in the in the fridge because the the family we're making it for just doesn't need as much right now um and I made cow's cheese the other day and I made yogurt the other day. Well, that only takes care of, you know, a couple of days. So I got to make some more. Now, one thing we actually do is when we have a glut of milk, um, if we don't have friends that need it, then mm -hmm. it'll go to our chickens. Yeah, actually, that's what we do with our evening milk. We take the evening milk and we mix that with our chicken feed and let it ferment overnight. And then the chickens have that in the evening and they absolutely love it. Yeah. She's looking at my arm. I scratched my arm by accident. And now it's and bleeding. And I, I got blood on me. Yeah. See, I, eh. it's, don't, 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 don't. Might gross somebody out. <laughs> anyway. So other tips down below. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I, I know there's tons more. That's just a few that we wanted to talk about. I was thinking about it this morning as, as I'm, you know, getting the goat's milk going. I'm like, gosh, there's a lot of milk here. I mean, our refrigerator is... Uh, almost completely full and we're almost out of jars we gotta find some people to take some of this milk yep or I gotta make more cheese so yep yeah all right that's it I'm Brad I'm Krista have an awesome and blessed day